Let's start standing then and roll out the feet. I'm gonna do a little, uh, I'll show you my feet. <laughs> Yay, with my tennis ball. So start with the right foot, feet side by side, and just roll front to back. And put as much weight into that foot as you can to really press down and let the tissues kind of meld over the ball. And you can stop in one spot and just push down or you can roll, do a little of both. And make sure to do the arch a little bit. It might be a little more tender. Yeah. Yeah. But this really gets um, into some issues of flexibility just with the ankle and foot. You know, our foot's always in shoes. So allowing it to breathe and move is amazing for the whole body. So really let it get over the toes, kind of let the toes hang off. Just kind of let them grip, not totally grip the ball, but just kind of Hang over it and then roll side to side. And do a little side to side work. Tends to try to fly away. So think side to side, up and down the foot. And then do a little gripping, like you would be able to pick the tennis ball up. If you can, you've got some mad skills. Probably oh. tennis ball is a little too big to grab, but just that action of trying to grip with the foot is really good for the arch. And if you have a small ball, you can play around with that, or even um, a hand towel at home, just picking it up. Really good for plantar fasciitis and other things. So then switch to the other foot and roll forward to back. And again, you can pause in some spots and just push down. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, hey. Welcome to the party. Thank you. You got a tennis ball or anything? I do, yes. Okay, yay. Love it. And then let the toes hang off. Get a little stretch with tennis ball pressure right where the toes meet the foot. And then do side to side along the length of the foot. Really make sure you get into the arch a little bit, as much pressure as you can stand there. Getting some movement in the, between all of those joints in the foot. There's a lot of them. And then try to grip, again, the ball, imagine you could Grip the ball with your feet and lift it up. It reminds me of my border collie. We had a border collie and he used to try with his front paws to lift the tennis ball. It was like that poor dog only had thumbs. <laughs> he would have been in heaven. He loved tennis balls. He used to like hold three of them in his mouth <laughs> at one time. It's the most funny thing I've ever seen. So then come standing, whoops, still with your tennis ball, feet about hip width apart, and align the outside edges of your feet so that they're in a straight line. Like if I had a yoga block there, my foot would be right up against the edge of it. And so my toes are almost now pointing in. And then think of rotating the thighs outward so that the weight is in your outer hip and your transversus abdominis engages right there in your pelvis, those deep abdominal muscles. 
So just feel that a minute. Feel the quads relaxing, the butt relaxing as those outer hips take over. And then starting with the right foot, think of keeping all four little toes on the ground. And imagine you're lifting, maybe you can, that big toe off the ground while the other toes stay down. And then push the big toe down. Try to lift that second toe while all four other toes stay to the ground. I'm not quite there yet, but in imagining. And then just move on down the line. So the middle toe, the other four toes pressing down. Think of that middle toe lifting. And then relax it. Move to that fourth. Imagine that fourth toe is lifting up. And then setting back down. Keep their weight over the heels. So just check in if you find yourself leaning way forward. I'm going to lift all the toes, set them back down, and then I'm going to aim for the pinky toe. Pushing the other four toes down, lifting the pinky toe. In my mind, at least, right? So that's where all movement starts. So getting there, telling ourselves we can get there in our mind, <laughs> if we can't in body. So then relax that foot, wiggle the toes out if you need to. And move into the left foot. So start with the big toe. The other four toes are going to press down. Weight is still in the heels. Try to relax the quads. Lift that big toe. Left foot. Set the big toe down. Move to that second toe. Try to lift the second toe only and set it down. The other four toes stay down now while the middle toe tries to lift. Setting it down. Move, move into the fourth toe, press the others down. And then wiggle those toes out if you need to. Try to separate the little pinky toe from the others. And then think, push the big toe, the other three toes down, lift the pinky toe, left foot. And then relax that, wiggle the toes out, wiggle the legs out. So just a little toe stretching. Think now of the weight in the heels. Lift all the toes. Spread them as wide as you can. Just feel a nice stretch through the toe box. And then setting them back down, wiggling them out. So just a little bit of feet work there to help free up our um, shins and hamstrings. So that will help with all of that. So then let's come on down to our backs and use some kind of prop. I don't know what you've got with you. It doesn't really matter what it is. It can be your yoga block, a blanket rolled up. Try to get your head, neck, and shoulders elevated. So you want it to start either bra line or mid back. And feet are flat on the mat. Just to get the head, neck, and shoulders elevated. Yeah, there you go. And then check in. I'm going to actually put this up higher so you're not just looking at my floor. Check in with your ribs. Feel your rib cage. Notice if your ribs are thrusting up to the ceiling or if your ribs are level with your abdomen. So check in even before you find your Pilates scoop for your abdominal engagement. Just checking in with the ribs. If you can feel your ribs thrusting up to the ceiling and the low back arching up off the mat, 
make your little setup even higher so that you're really kind of elevating head and it's just angling down towards your pelvis. So check in there a moment. Notice how that's gonna ease tension maybe in your neck and shoulders. And begin your Pilates breathing. So you're gonna engage the transversus abdominis by engaging between your hip bones, your bony hip bones. It's like you're pulling those apart. And then your rib, navel to spine, ribs are drawing down and together. So it's like you're cinched up like you're wearing a corset. And then just breathe here. Feel the lungs expand to the side body, the back body. And just take maybe five deep breaths. Just kind of arriving. Checking in, noticing what it feels like to have that elevated upper back. Allow the tongue to fall into the lower jaw. Expand the ribs even more. And then take a deep inhale. As you exhale, just push your head down into whatever object is kind of right where the skull meets the neck. And it's not real hard. You're just engaging a little bit to push the head down and then relax. And do that three or so more times. Keep sending the breath up into the ribs. The belly's nice and taut. And then relax the neck. And take the chin side to side. So take the chin over to the left. Kind of imagine that you're tucking it down into your left armpit and then roll it back up and over to the right armpit. Kind of like you would be looking down towards your feet as you roll it to one side. And you're getting a little nice tension, kind of like how we were rolling out the feet on the ball. We're now kind of rolling out the back of the neck, back of the head on whatever object we've got underneath. So even if it's just a blanket, it's still getting some gentle pressure, some myofascial release work on it. Kind of easing tension. And then check in, bring the arms up to the ceiling, palms facing one another. Separate the shoulder blades and lift the shoulder blades up to the ceiling with those arms straight and then allow the shoulder blades to roll back down the rib cage. Shoulders drop down. And just do that with your breath a few times, puppet arms, just raising and lowering. Yeah, good, should feel good through the shoulders. And then drop the hands down to the hips, take an inhale there, finding oppositional energy from fingertips to shoulders. As you exhale, send the arms up and overhead, but don't let the ribs follow. Keep those ribs angling right down into the belly. And move with your breath now, inhaling, arms down, exhaling, I'm up. And maybe start turning the hands to face each way. So it doesn't really matter whether it's on the in and up, just face your palms one direction and then turn and face in the other direction. And just kind of explore your range of mobility, getting some internal and external shoulder rotation into raising and lowering your arms. And then take the arms overhead, palms facing towards one another. And shoulders are nice and grounded to start with. And you've got your arms going overhead to the point where just where your ribs want to flourish. So check back in with your ribs. Make sure they are reaching down the body. So that limits my range of motion quite a bit this morning. I'm a little stiff. 
so they won't be clear overhead. But hold them there just where they start to feel heavy. And then just sliding the shoulder blades along the rib cage. Reach or shoot the arms overhead and then back down. So it's kind of like we were doing puppet arms where the fingertips were going to the ceiling. Now they're just going up to where the wall meets the ceiling behind you. But all the work is in the shoulder blades, elevating and depressing. And the ribs are still drawing down and together. Just getting up some movement, freeing up some movement in the shoulder blades. And then drop the shoulder blades back down into their sockets, recheck in with the core, knit the ribs, send the arms out wide and then down to the hips and then up overhead. So just flow the movement with your breath, this time in circles. Yeah, keep using the core to knit the ribs. Allow the hip bones to separate. And then reverse your circles. Just kind of checking in with those shoulders. And hands back up to the ceiling. We're going to just hold the arms here in puppet arms. The shoulders are just kind of down in their sockets, so we're not reaching up towards the ceiling. Take a deep inhale to knit the ribs, draw the abdominals in. As you exhale, we're just going to lift the head, look down to our belly button, and then lower the head back down. Exhale to lift the head, look at the belly button. Inhale, relax the head back down. And two more times, just with that head lift. And then we're going to take arms overhead on our inhale. Still drawing the ribs down. Exhale, curl head, neck, and shoulders. Reach the arms out long over the hips. Keep looking down at the belly. Inhale, roll it all back down. Exhale, chest lift, look to the belly, reach the arms long. And just keep flowing with the breath. Let's do that a few more times. Really feel the back body activate as much as the front body. So it's like it's actively pushing the mat away as you roll up. So that's helping your neck. We don't want the neck muscles doing all the work. And then we're going to hold here, lift one leg up to tabletop at 90 degree. We're going to keep the hips level. Keep up into that chest lift if you can. If you need to, if the neck feels pressure, you can lower the head down. And do some toe dips here. Try not to let the heel come any closer in towards your bum as you lower it down. And one more, then lower that right foot down, lower the head down, send the arms overhead, oppositional energy. Shoulder blades are reaching down. And ribs are too while the fingers are going up. And just feel that stretch through the shoulders for a moment. Roll the neck left to right or stride little circles on the ceiling with your nose if you've got some neck tension. Take a deep inhale, knit the ribs, hollow the belly out. Exhale, curl it up, head, neck, and shoulders. Lift that left foot. And begin your toe dips here. Keep reaching the fingers long, activate through the core and the back muscles to support that chest lift. Two more. Lowering the head when you need to, not too much tension in the neck. 
And foot comes down, head, neck, and shoulders roll down. Send the arms overhead. Externally rotate the shoulders so the palms face overhead. The thumbs face out to the sides. Feel a little stretch in the shoulders. And then so your palms are facing kind of overhead down towards the floor. Yeah. And then take those hands, you can have some bend in the elbow, draw them down towards the hips and back overhead along the floor. And when the hands come down towards the hips, really squeeze the elbows into the ribs, feel your lats firing. And do a few more of those. The whole time the core is working, the breath is up into the rib cage, expanding the breath into the side body and the back body. Squeezing elbows in. Two more. And then relax the arms down, shake the shoulders out a little bit if you need to. Let's bring the hands behind the head now. So interlace the fingers, take the elbows out wide, feel a little spinal extension in your rib cage area. So from mid back to crown of the head, extending the spine a little bit, just finding a nice little stretch. And then draw the back down to the floor. Bend the elbows a little bit, send them all the way in towards one another. And then separate them just to where you can feel the armpit and shoulder muscles start to work. Take a deep inhale, make the ribs. Exhale, curl head, neck, and shoulders up. Yeah, we're going to hold up and then right armpit, left knee. Inhale back to center, left armpit to right knee. And keep flowing with the breath. Keep pushing the head back into the hands. And use the back body as well as those core muscles to do the work. Try to relax the neck by pushing head into hands. Check in with the hips. Make sure the hips are staying pretty straight. So all of this work is just in the ribcage, the thoracic area of the spine. One more each side. And relax, head, neck, and shoulders down. Relax the arms down. Take the knees side to side. And pause and stretch at each side. So slow and shield wiper. And then switch to the other side. Notice where you're feeling some of the stretch today. Maybe it's in the quads, maybe the quads are tight. Maybe it's that hip flexor. And then back to center. And then normally we don't want something under our head for a bridge, right? But as long as what you've got going on under your head kind of starts in the mid back and you've got this whole upper body, um, sloping downward, it's gonna be okay and safe for the neck. So we're gonna do a little bridging, just real low bridging. We're not trying to get to a high bridge here, but the upper body sloped up. So check in, start some pelvic tilts. Drop the low back to the mat and the navel to the mat. That's a posterior tuck, the tailbone lifting. And then anterior tuck, send the tailbone down, find some space under the low back. And just keep moving with the breath. Check in on your range of motion. Notice which one feels better to you. Notice if you're able to get to that position where you're anteriorly tilted. Are you able to get space between your low back and the mat? Does that one feel less good than the tuck? So just notice. And you're trying to just move from the core here. You're trying not to squeeze the butt and make the butt do all the work. 
Get the core, the hips, pelvic floor into it. Those muscles are doing the work. The ribs are still drawing down and together. So we still have our scoop. And then on your exhale, we're gonna find that posterior tuck where the low back is flat. We're gonna push the low back down into the mat to start lifting the tailbone and hips even higher. So it's, you're pushing down with your upper back to lift the tailbone. And that same thing happens all the way up the spine. As you come up into like a little mini bridge, Inhale, find some space. Exhale, roll down from that mid back first. Really feel the lumbar spine come down. Find all of those lumbar vertebrae contact with the mat. And then roll back into your six o'clock. Let the low back arch off the mat. Still trying to knit the ribs a little bit. So then just keep flowing a couple more times with your breath, but really focus on the articulation and finding contact with the mat. So notice you might find more contact with your lumbar spine on the mat now with our head, neck, and shoulders elevated than you normally do. Maybe not, but just kind of noticing how it feels different in your body. Always making sure your neck feels safe. Maybe pause up in the bridge, try to relax your butt, allow the outer hip to take over a little bit. Root down through the heels. Feel like you're drawing your hip bones apart, the ribs are strong. And then melt it back down one vertebrae at a time. And then do a little more windshield wiper. And we're just gonna roll to one side and push up or you can rock and roll. It's kind of hard to get rocking and rolling with the prop behind you. So move that prop out of the way. <clears throat> and we're gonna move into holding at least a little roll like a ball rounding the spine, getting some spinal flexion. So you can grab behind the knees or in front of the knees, either way. But you're really trying to melt your low back here towards the mat. So look down towards your belly. Use your core to balance here. Send the elbows out to the side so that the mid back does some work. Yeah, nice. And then keep looking to the belly, holding that balance. Try to reach the lumbar spine more and more and more down towards the mat. So your whole spine becomes like a capital C. And then you can inhale forward, exhale back. You can begin rocking. If it feels good to you to roll on your spine, it's an inhale back and an exhale to help lift you up. Yeah, and then your legs, wherever they're at, you're just trying to keep them in that same spot so that the core is doing the work and it's not the momentum of the legs. Nice. And keep looking at the belly, maybe do a few more. And if the lumbar spine is really not reaching towards the mat, you'll notice you kind of get that slapping sign. So just working on rounding, rounding, rounding. Send the legs out long and just find a forward fold over the legs. Check in with the hamstrings. Roll out the ankles, whatever feels good here. And then we're gonna to try to pop right up on our sit bones so that we have a nice straight spine. So to get there, most of us have to bend the knees a little bit to be right up on the sit bones. Otherwise we get that rounding of the lumbar spine, which we don't want in this case. So flexing, pushing out through the heels, flexing the ankles. Take your arms out wide, nice. 
and grow nice and tall up through the crown of the head. Take a moment here to find some spinal extension, lift the heart up towards the ceiling and then relax it back to normal spine. Just do that a couple more times. Gentle spinal extension and back to normal. Maybe inhaling that extension, looking up to where the wall meets the ceiling and then relax it down. And we're still up on our sit bones. Our ribs are knitting together. We've got the core working. Take a deep inhale as you exhale, twist to the left. And it's happening from belly button to crown of the head. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist right. Move with your breath for a few more rounds. Notice that the legs and ankles aren't moving, so you want the twist happening from the navel on up through the front of the head. So if your legs or your hips are getting involved, don't twist quite as, quite as far. One more each side. And then relax that out. You can shake the legs out. Lean back. If it feels safe for your hands to face towards your hips, go ahead and let that happen. You can bend the knees and bring the feet flat and squeeze the elbows together. So they're squeezing together. Yeah, nice. Opening up the collarbones. And then we're going to lift, look down towards your knees as you lift the hips. Unsqueeze the butt, allow the outer hips and hamstrings to support you. And then lower back down. Take a moment to breathe. And as you exhale, lift up, looking out between the knees. And lower back down. Nice. We're gonna do it one more time and we're gonna add tricep dips. So make sure you're really reaching the elbows towards one another. And then we're gonna exhale, push up. If this feels safe to your body, keep squeezing the elbows together and try to allow gravity to pull you down so it's a little tricep dip and then back up. Yeah, and if it feels like too much, you can do it with hips down but trying to not, um, to just use gravity. Yeah, it looks good. Keep squeezing elbows together. And take rest when you need to. I cheated, right? I took some rest to take my sweatshirt off. <laughs> and then shake it out, shake the arms out. Good work for the triceps. If you want to build in making it harder, you just straighten out the legs. But it's plenty hard either way, right? Yeah. So just different transitions you can do. So come back onto your sit bones, seated nice and tall. Separate your feet a nice wide hip width apart. And make sure you can remove flushiness, have some bend in the knees so that you've got a nice straight spine. And then send the arms out to the sides again. Palms just kind of facing forward. So keep imagining that high ponytail area of the head reaching up towards the ceiling. <clears throat> we're gonna add a twist to a forward fold here. So we're gonna take the right hand over to the left pinky toe as we twist and round forward, flip that back palm to the ceiling. And then you can kind of chop motion a couple times towards that pinky toe. And you're unraveling the spine to come back up to that tall sit. Take a deep inhale here. Exhale, you dive up and over to center. Left hand or right pinky toes. Back hand is flipped. You're staying nice and tall and lifted through the abdomen as you chop with that front hand. Inhaling back up. So it's called saw. So we think of chopping. Exhale, dive up and over. Right hand to left pinky. So you can kind of saw that left pinky toe. 
Inhaling, you articulate the spine back up to that tall sit. Exhale, up and over, left hand, right toe. And think of oppositional energy here with the shoulder blades. They're still pulling down the back. Inhaling up, knit the ribs, check in with the core, up and over, right hand, left pinky. Looks lovely. Inhale it back up. One more time, left hand to the right. So we're diving up and over here. Shoulders stay in their sockets. Chopping three times. Inhaling back up. And shake it out a little bit. Roll the shoulders. Relax the arms. Nice. And coming down to your belly. So kind of check in here. Push the tops of the feet into the mat. As you push the pubic bone down, you still got your core engaged, your ribs knitting together, belly to spine. Bring the hands for now just under the shoulders. And we're gonna look down between our hands to keep the neck nice and long. Think of that high ponytail area again. And as you inhale, gaze up just maybe at the edge of your mat so that your neck's nice and long. Yeah, beautiful. Allow the shoulders to drop back down the back even more. Push the tops of the feet down to activate the whole back side of the leg. And as you exhale, lower head, neck and shoulders. As you inhale, you're rolling that marble away with your nose to lift, pushing shoulders down, pushing pubic bone down, squeezing shoulder blades down. Exhale back down. Send the hands now long, arms are long, palms flat on the mat, and make them wider than your yoga mat. So they're nice and wide. Push the tops of the feet down again, activate through the hamstrings and the legs, the outer hip. Feel how if you relax the butt, the outer hip starts working. So we're just focusing on working that outer hip instead of the butt today. There's nothing wrong with using the butt too. So as you inhale, lift head, neck, and shoulders up into our swan position. Pubic bone is really pushing down into the mat. Fire the butt if your back hurts or separate your feet out wider. You can walk the hands in to lift a little higher if you want to, but only if it's safe in your body. Only if you're still able to keep the shoulder blades reaching down. And then lower back down, you can spend at the elbows. And head neck and shoulders down. Relaxing a moment and then push the tops of the feet back down, push the pubic bone down, engage the core. Begin to walk the hands in, the lift, head, neck and shoulders, pubic bones down, shoulder blades are reaching down the back. So the whole back body's working. Yeah, really nice. And you're breathing. So we're just prepping here for swan dive. So a swan dive is just when you let your hands go and you rock back and forth. But we're just gonna prep for it here. If you regularly do it, you can. And then bend at the elbows, roll back down. Hands under shoulders, push back, find a child's pose. Rock your hips side to side, kind of check in, make sure the back is feeling safe. And take a moment to check in with the pelvis too. Notice for most of us, the pelvis is kind of tucked. The tailbones are aimed down towards the floor. So practice, play around with reaching the sit bones back and trying to aim them up where the wall meets the ceiling. So they probably really won't get there. But just notice if you tuck and round the back, the sit bones kind of reach towards the mat. And then as you untuck, they reach up and away. The spine straightens out. So just play around with that a little bit. 
it's just to kind of bring awareness of where your body normally goes. And it's a little stretch to the hips, the back. So as much as you can, beginning to get as much into that neutral spine on a regular basis as you can, instead of that tough pelvis, when you're in child's pose, makes it even healthier for the spine. So something to play around with as you practice. And it's kind of a nice stretch to the bones. It releases the pelvic floor muscles a little more for some pelvic floor health. All right, and then let's push the hands up. Let's go ahead and come into a little cat-cow since we're here. So navels to spine, ribs are knitting together. Maybe not your um, most advanced um, cat-cow or not as much movement as normal with the abs engaged. And just flow with the breath and focus on the lumbar spine starting the movement, starting it with the tailbone. Nice, and when you get to that cow, really think of the shoulder blades going down the back away from the ears and allowing the elbow creases to roll forward. And it's almost like your heart is really melting towards the mat more than your belly in theory, yeah, and then roll bone by bone, tuck the tailbone under. And then a few more times, just exploring, articulating through the spine. Allow the collarbones to open. neutral spine, so the belly's in and up to the spine a little bit, and you've got a slight arch in the low back. Roll those elbow creases forward, and then bend at the elbow a little bit, just to make sure you're not hyperextending the elbows. And we're going to raise the shoulder blades, the rhomboids, the lats, we're going to lift those up to the ceiling, and then relax. Yeah, so make it a smaller movement even. So the spine is not flexing. The sit bones are reaching towards the back wall. And it's just between the shoulder blades, tiny movement lifting and relaxing. Yeah, it's just those rhomboids and lats working, ideally. And you keep rolling those elbow creases forward. Keep pushing the palm of the hand flat. And then sit the sit bones back. It's almost like coming into puppy pose here, but really focus on getting the sit bones up and out, trying to find that neutral spine. Make sure the pelvis isn't tucking under like that, but the sit bones are reaching long. And check in with the shoulders. Maybe allow the shoulders to slide shoulder blades to slide forward and back again, elevating the pressing along the rib cage. And then curl the toes, make sure the toes are curled under. We're gonna slide the hands in as we begin to tuck the pelvis and shift the pelvis forward and look to your belly. Yeah, and then allow the, the fingertips to lift and we're just unraveling the spine, stacking it bone by bone up to a needed kneeling position. Shake the arms out, allow them to relax. The ribs, make sure the muscles engaged. 
Up in the chest, up the mid back. Behind you and rolling down bone by bone. Set your fingertips meet the mat. And then from there, we're gonna slide the fingers forward. And the tailbone out long so you're untucking and you're finding that stretch again. Um, sit bones to crown of the head. And then start with the pelvis. Tuck the pelvis under, round the spine, shift the hips as far forward as you can, relax the shoulders, roll up bone by bone. Keep in the air, tuck the chin to chest, drop the sternum back behind you. You feel like you're melting off of a wall as you round up and over. So the belly comes in and up above the rib or under the ribs. Once the fingertips come down, they just slide out over the mat. Shoulder blades down the back. Shift the sit bones to untuck the pelvis. So you got a nice straight spine stretch. And then tuck the pelvis under first. Engage belly to spine. Knit the ribs. Begin to roll back up as the pelvis shifts forward. Nice, and then roll the shoulder blades a couple times in one direction and then the other. And let's do um, a little more rotation with the upper spine again. So come lying onto your belly You can grab your blanket, or not your belly, I'm sorry, your left side. Grab your blanket and rest it under your head or whatever you have there. Yoga block. So stack shoulders, stack hips. Knees are bent 90 degrees with your shins parallel with the front of the mat. And then think of engaging the core. So you're still thinking of pulling the hip bones apart, navel to spine, ribs drawing together. Left ribs, your bottom ribs, kind of lifting up off the mat so that the core is nice and engaged. Send the hands out in front. Let's do that bow and arrow. Again, it's, the focus is on the twist from the belly button through the upper back. So you draw the arm across. Open that right arm out. Think of reaching that right knee forward. Make sure the twist is from the navel up and then draw the right arm in, drop back across. <clears throat> and do that a couple more times. Exploring that movement, exploring the opening at the top. Explore what it feels like to change the way your palm is facing. Bending at the elbow to draw the hand back across. And again, explore sending the hand towards the back side of the body, explore rolling it forward. <clears throat> and just explore that rolling and opening up the chest and then rolling forward, closing the chest off. With that arm overhead, if comfortable. If not, maybe it's kind of in goalpost arm. Yeah, and then roll onto your back. Move the prop out of the way from your head a little bit. <clears throat> Feet flat, let's do a little more bridging, this time without the support under our upper body. So now that we've been working the core a little bit, draw the ribs in. Begin your pelvic tilt. And as you exhale, we're gonna tuck the pelvis, flatten the low back against the mat, push down with the upper back to lift bone by bone. <clears throat> Inhale at the top, grow long. Exhale, drop the upper back and mid back first. 
and then roll down through the lumbar spine. Try to get as much lumbar spine grounded as you can, bone by bone. Do that one more time. Exhale to up, tuck the pelvis and roll up. This time we're gonna hold it at the top, grow long, push down with the arms. Kind of the shoulder blades are squeezing together at this point. Push down through the left heel. We're gonna to try to keep the hips level. Maybe bend that right knee to the chest. Maybe you just hold the bridge. You can extend the leg long, lower it down towards the floor and lift it to the ceiling if you can keep the hips level. If not, maybe you just hold that knee bent into the chest and then bend it back in, lower that foot down. Level off the hips, roll down bone by bone. Inhale at the bottom, maybe the low back arches away from the mat. Then tuck the pelvis, press the low back down and begin to lift bone by bone. Check in, make sure both sides are equally working equally. Squeeze the shoulder blades together at the top. Press the triceps down into the mat. Lift that left knee. Try to keep the hips level. The back is not arching here. You can extend the leg long if that feels comfortable for you and then lowering it down and lifting. Or just hugging it into the chest. So three times, and then bend the knee, set the foot flat, level off the hips if you need to, and then roll back down. Start with melting the sternum first, rolling down bone by bone. Check in, maybe do a few windshield wipers. And then hug one knee into the chest and the other leg out long. We're going to rock up and onto our right side this time. So grabbing whatever prop we have for under your head. Spine is parallel with the back of your mat. Knees or shins parallel with the front. Got that 90 degree bend in the knees. Make sure your shoulder, your left shoulder is right over your right one. Hips are stacked. Core is engaged so that that bottom rib is lifted up off the mat. Arms out long in front. We're going to send that left arm out longer than the right. And then bring the arm across the right arm. Twisting from navel to crown. And just flow with your breath a few times. In and out of that, think of that left knee staying forward so that you get as much twist as you can through the thoracic spine. And again, play with the palm facing down, facing up. Let that shoulder roll around in the socket a little bit. And just flow in and out of the bow and arrow in between. Explore rolling forward and rolling back a few times. With your arm just kind of in whatever position feels like a good stretch and feels comfortable to you without any tingling or uncomfortable feelings in the shoulder. You can always bend the elbow more, more of a goalpost kind of thing if you feel any pain in the shoulders. Every day is different, right? And then come back to that side. We're going to push up. And then using your prop, using whatever you have, we're going to come onto our backs again into that bridge position. You can even use a yoga block. Um, explore what feels comfortable for your body. 
And we're going to come into that just iliac psoas stretch here. This is kind of like your savasana for Pilates. Engage the core a little bit. Make sure you're in a good bridge position. Pushing down through the heels. Tuck the pelvis to lift the hips up. Find a comfortable height for you. And the block's kind of right under the sacrum, not right on the tailbone, but low enough on the sacrum that your pubic bone is higher than your bony hip bones in the front. So you're at a slant downward from your pubic bone to your belly. And then check in, make sure your feet are kind of wide enough that they feel nice and supported, like you're not having to use abs or a lot of butt to hold yourself here. It's just bones stacked over one another. The bones are just holding you in place. So just allow softening through the belly now, so no more need to scoop or have that strong Pilates breath. The belly is just relaxing. The hips are relaxing. The block or whatever you've got under your hips is supporting your weight so you can just melt. Feel the back ribs and the sternum and the upper back melt into the mat. Allow the pelvic floor to soften and relax. Feel from that bony, the bony hip bones, the ASIS, from there to your pubic bone, that's where your iliacus muscle is on each side. So just allow that to relax. Each side of the abdomen, the psoas. Use your exhales to soften a little more with each breath. Check in with your head, neck, and shoulders. Maybe it feels good to kind of rainbow the head from side to side again. Taking the chin from the right armpit across and over to the left armpit. So just keep letting the abdomen relax. Make sure that doesn't build tension. If it does, just keep the head still. And make sure your head is neutral. We're gonna bring our hands to the block or whatever you've got under your pelvis. Engage the core just barely to kind of melt off of your prop. Send your feet as wide as your mat. And then send the legs over to the right. Find that spinal twist. And then up and over to the left. Take one more deep exhale there. Inhale the knees back to center, squeeze them into the chest. Rock on the sacrum a little bit, just massage the sacrum. Lift. Forehead up to your knees, look to your belly button, activate the core, 
And we're going to rock and roll. In the spine up to sitting. So thank you all very much for joining me today. <laughs>